From jingle writer to hit recording artist, Jim Brickman has sold millions of albums while reawakening romance for many of his fans. Hi, I'm Ernie Manus. Coming up on interviews, our conversation with Jim Brickman. the kind of music you do? Wow. You know, it's, it's pop instrumental music is really what it is. For such a long time, I was in this new age category, which I always thought was funny because I always think of new age music as like waterfalls and birds singing and, st- and sandals and candles, you know? And, <laughs> but I, I, I'm a songwriter. I'm a pop songwriter. That's really my background. And so I, I kind of feel like the songs that I write, whether they're instrumental or whether they're vocal collaborations really fall into sort of an adult contemporary pop category. But you didn't grow up with music around you, which I think is really strange. Well, I, had, I sort of found my own music. I don't come from a musical family at all. In fact, I think my parents had like five record albums, and they were all like, you know, the, the requisite albums of, of the 60s, like Herb Alpert, Tijuana Brass, Whipped Cream, and Other Delights, that one. Uh, you know, the My Fair Lady soundtrack or whatever, and, uh, you know, Camelot. The stuff that was popular, the records that they bought, it, it wasn't, maybe like a Carpenter's record or something. But uh, I don't think they were real big music fans. I don't remember them ever, you know, playing music in the house and just sitting, you know, having people over, or whatever. It just didn't, it wasn't like that. So I felt like I had to find it myself. Did you have a piano in the house? I didn't have a piano, no. My parents, uh, they, they weren't interested. They were like, why do you want a piano? Like, if we buy you one, then the next day it's going to be like, you want to play the drums, and then you're going to want to play the clarinet. And then, so instead of buying me a, a real piano, they bought me this piece of green felt that had like the notes drawn on it in magic marker. Right. And uh, I played the felt for about two years before I got a, a real piano. And then they figured, okay, he's serious, because I sounded so good on the felt. So they decided, well, maybe he should get a real piano. Were you good from the start? Uh, no. <laughs> really? No. I was, I don't know what good is when you're five, you know, right. but um, <laughs> I took piano lessons from this nightmare woman down the street who just, I didn't get her and she didn't get me and it was just, I, you know, I was, I was a rebel at, you know, at, at the piano, as much of a rebel as you can be at five years old, <laughs> but I just didn't really go with the flow. I always, I always think, I think I, I was always a songwriter, but when you're a kid, you're taking piano lessons, you're, you don't, that's not a developed talent until you're a teenager to write your own music. So I, I think I was average. You would never have known if you came to my third grade piano recital that you would pick me out of everybody and go, now he should be playing concerts all over the world, you know. But then do you think you had a gift in there or was it something you learned? No, no, it's a, it's a um, you know, I always say, I always think gift is such an odd word because it's like, Yes, I have a gift, you know, and I don't mean it like that. It's just that it, it comes naturally to me, I, I guess is the best way to, to put it. it. It's not something I think about. It's like people who, who grow up speaking in a bilingual household. They, it, they're exposed to it, and it becomes part of their world, and then when they speak in that language or dream in that language, it's second nature. It's the same kind of thing. Can you solve problems, think through life by just sitting down at the piano? Is that... Is that something you do? It's not so much of a problem solving as it is an a, aggression taker, almost like going to the gym and you know running or lifting weights. It's a place to put your energy when when you are em- emotional. Yeah. And it's a place. I, I'm very physical as a piano player. I mean, I'm very. It's almost like I don't even know how to describe it. Like uh, there should be an event in the Olympics for you know aggressive piano playing with your arms in a certain, you know, because it's Coming just, up to it's, do the scales right like part, now. I feel like it's part of my body when I'm sitting there. It's totally comfortable, and it feels like I just, I'm supposed to be doing it. There's not even a question about a choice of, should I play the piano or should I, you know, be an insurance salesman, you know? <laughs> Is it something you do in your free time? Like, if no. you're around the house, do you sit around and play? No. no? I mean, if you, if you came over for a party you know, with the crew or something like that, and say, play, the play, play a song. But, and I used to get invited to people's parties, you know, <laughs> not as a guest, but as, as like the entertainment, the, the requisite piano players there, so let's sing carols. But uh, even now, I don't really practice, and I don't really play for fun, because I'm, um, I'm playing every night. So it's like practicing and playing for fun 
in in my chosen passion of yeah. of my job basically.